New Orleans Homes, Go Take a Walk by Shiny Visions. Early morning in the city of New Orleans is a magical time. Though enjoying lively bar and music scenes will definitely keep you up late at nights, be sure to make time to take an early morning stroll around the city. That is the time, while the crowds still sleep, you have the best opportunity to see and appreciate the beauty and character of New Orleans. Its neighborhoods are charming, historic, lovely, and not to be missed. The French Quarter is the city's oldest neighborhood. It was quiet this morning as shopkeepers cleaned up and readied their establishments for the next influx of visitors arriving later that day. People walked deliberately, getting errands done, while others, with their house shutters still closed, continued sleeping. Though the city was founded by the French in 1718, because of the great New Orleans fire in 1788 and a second fire in 1794, nearly all of the French Quarter was destroyed. Because of that, most of today's historic French Quarter buildings date no earlier than around 1790. For the rebuilding, the ruling Spanish at the time levied strict new codes that required structures to be sited with the more fire-resistant brick and covered with stucco rather than using the traditional wood siding. Architecture continued to be influenced by the still prevailing French population at the time. But there were also inspirations from the Caribbean, such as bright tropical house colors and outdoor porches called balconies and galleries. Some of these outdoor spaces were elevated like porches, extending off a second floor. Balconies use cantilever supports, which don't require them to be supported from the ground. The name galleries, on the other hand, introduced in 1851, used external supports sunk into the ground, mostly in the corners. As the city grew in wealth, more buildings in the French Quarter displayed elaborate ironwork galleries into their structures, among other displays of prosperity. The nearby Garden District, originally developed between 1832 and 1900, is considered to be one of the best preserved collections of historic mansions in the southern United States. It is a picture into this era of prosperity in New Orleans. Previously plantation land, this area was divided and sold to wealthy society who did not wish to live among the predominantly Creole population of the French Quarter. These large land parcels took up half a city block, with each property surrounded by a large garden, thus the name the Garden District. In the late 1800s, as the area became more urban, some of these large lots were subdivided. This produced the pattern for much of the neighborhood today. On a typical city block sits two early 19th century mansions that are surrounded by smaller late Victorian period houses. From this change, the garden district became known for its architecture rather than for gardens. While walking through this lush and serene area, we saw cobblestone sidewalks alongside southern live oak trees planted long ago with their crookedly arching branches overhanging well-groomed lawns. These majestic trees, some with moss hanging off their large limbs, shaded outdoor sitting areas and long wraparound porches adjoined to stately old-style homes. Each house was lovely, yet showed unique character. I pictured residents sipping lemonade outdoors on comfortable lawn furniture, waving embroidered fans while chatting with each other and passers-by. Once carefully aligned sidewalk paver stones are pushed up from the ground by the surrounding sprawling trees as they grew in girth and their roots beneath them expanded. We walked by thick manicured palm trees and a large fountain in the middle of a grassy square with its bubbling sounds harmonizing with the peaceful surroundings. We viewed perfectly landscaped two-story homes with large balconies or galleries on both floors. Properties were enclosed with heavily ornate wrought iron fences with artistically decorated gates. 
Another morning's walk took us through a charming neighborhood with homes that were vibrantly painted, narrow yet long, called shotgun-style houses. Each home, though of similar design, looked unique in character and appearance. The prosperous port city of New Orleans experienced a population boom in the early 1800s, creating a high demand for housing, which spurred the construction of shotgun houses. Because of this city's varied ethnic population, this melding of cultures influenced its architecture as well. Shotgun homes originated in West Africa, then were introduced to Haiti and through Haitian and Western African refugees, immigrants, and slaves, the design made its way to New Orleans. Initially because of their simplicity and small footprint, these shotgun houses served poorer populations. The homes were often built by nearby factories to rent to their workers. These economical homes were looked down upon by the city's middle and upper class society. But because of the large number of shotgun houses in the city, they remained occupied and popular to this day. Shotgun homes are characteristically only a single room wide and a few rooms deep. Historians speculated that the home's perfectly aligned layout allowed a shotgun slug to be shot through the open front door, straight through each room and out the back door without hitting anything. Thus the name shotgun. But, more likely, the name was derived from the West African Yoruba word togun, which translates to house. The oldest shotgun house designs lacked hallways, requiring inhabitants to walk through each room in order to walk through the home from front to back. The alignment of the windows and doors at either end, combined with high ceilings, allowed for efficient ventilation and airflow in a hot and humid climate. A shotgun house's raised foundation, which allowed for airflow below the home, also discouraged termites and other pests from invading. The raised foundation also helped protect against damage from flooding. The famous New Orleans hospitality might have sprung from these closely built shotgun houses. Seeking relief from the oppressively hot summer weather, these inhabitants often sought relief by gathering outside on their porches. The close proximity of the porches likely promoted neighborhood socialization. Variations of the design, such as the double-barrel shotgun, are two units with a shared center wall. Camelback designs had a second story built towards the back of the house, but the most striking features of the shotgun houses are their vibrant colors and diverse styles. Towards the late 1800s, shotguns became more decorative and individualized and included more diverse cultural influences. What does a shotgun style house look like inside? And what are their backyards like? Just you wait. During one morning's walk, as I admired a charming and picturesque neighborhood of predominantly shotgun homes, I came across one particularly attractive and impeccably maintained house. I stopped right in front of it, taking in the beautiful structure, imagining what it might look like on the inside. Okay, I might have been gawking. It was just so lovely. When all of the sudden, a white-haired lady came out and hollered, You want to come inside and take a look around my house? I froze. Was she kidding? Was she mocking my touristy staring of her house with my big Nikon camera hanging on my neck? No, she apparently wasn't. Because then, she held her door open for us to enter. The interior was pristine and bright, with shiny hardwood floors, polished furnishings that looked antique, and sparkling crystal chandeliers overhead. I proceeded to remove my shoes when she stopped me and insisted that I needn't do so. She asked us if we had breakfast yet, then offered us cookies and a Coke. After we politely declined each offer, she explained the history of the house and how long they had been living in it, I was in a state of shock. Seeing my camera, she told me that I could freely take pictures if I wished. Her home was a double-barrel shotgun design. 
Originally a duplex divided by a center wall, the wall was removed and the units combined to make one spacious living area. The fireplace mantle in the photo is where the original wall stood. She went on to show us the rest of her perfectly tidy and decorated home that could have been photographed that very day for Southern Living Magazine or something. She even showed us the upstairs, so the shotgun design must have also been a camelback. The home has undergone extensive renovations. There were lightly colored, large, airy rooms, walk-in closets, and bright bathrooms with claw-footed tubs. There was a second kitchen in the back with retro-looking appliances. Then she showed us her charming back garden with a gardening shed. It looked like a perfect, private, and peaceful getaway from a busy life. There, we could also view other adjacent backyards. It was like a lovely, well-kept secret for the residences in this historic neighborhood. This impromptu house tour by this sweet lady was what first endeared us to this city of New Orleans. Her genuine hospitality and friendliness and her down-to-earth manner as she showed us her magnificent home will forever stay in our memories as one of the best experiences in our time in this wonderful city. For many more fun adventures, be sure to go to shinyvisions.com. Thank you for watching this video, New Orleans Homes, Go Take a Walk. This is Shiny Visions.